Good day, fellow learners. Once again, this is your mentor, your fact check buddy, Ray Gapos, joining you in another teaching and learning session. This time, we're going to talk about a drug which is frequently being studied and uh, being discussed among friends who are about to take an exam. So the question is, if gentamicin is toxic to the inner ear, why is it given in Meniere's disease? Well, we know for a fact that in Meniere's disease, there is a potential for the patient to develop hearing loss. And if gentamicin is autotoxic, meaning it can potentially damage the vestibulocochlear nerve, then why do we give a medication that could potentially aggravate hearing loss in a patient who might develop hearing loss because of a disease condition? That's what we're going to clarify for our teaching and learning session today. And so before we get to start, let me first state my disclaimer. And of course, I'd like to invite you to join me in the mission. Our goal is to provide free NCLEX R and application and review to 100 nurses. We've done this last year, and we'd like to do it again this year. And to help us achieve this, just do one important thing, and that is watch and finish the ads in our videos. And thank you so much for those who are complying with this request of mine. So let's go back to the question. If gentamicin is toxic to the inner ear, why is it given in Meniere's disease? So literatures would usually say that the exact cause of Meniere's disease is unknown, although some believe that it could be associated with autoimmune conditions. However, it's also very important to note that there are three common manifestations in Meniere's disease that includes your vertigo in which the patient could be having spinning or rotating or revolving motion. The patient could also have tinnitus and of course, hearing loss. Now, here is the thing that we need to clarify. Gentamicin is an aminoglycoside that causes two significant adverse reactions. One is nephrotoxicity. So we have to check the BUN of the patient, the creatinine check if the patient's having oliguria. But the good thing about the nephrotoxic condition that could be brought about by gentamicin is that it is reversible. Now, on the other hand, the autotoxic condition that could result is not. So it is irreversible. But the good thing about gentamicin is that it has a greater toxicity on the vestibular system, which is primarily responsible for maintaining balance and not so much with the cochlear system, which is responsible for our sense of hearing. Therefore, potentially gentamicin can improve on the vertigo without necessarily worsening the hearing impairment of a patient with Meniere's disease. That's the reason why gentamicin is given in patients with Meniere's disease. That is to improve on the patient's vertigo because as I've said, gentamicin has greater toxicity on the vestibular system and less in the cochlear system, which simply means that is it has the potential to improve on the balance of a patient with Meniere's disease. Okay, so let's move on and let's talk about gentamicin. So before anything else, I'd like to say that, well, the concepts that we're about to discuss were all taken from my book, NCLEX RN Quick Fix in Pharmacology. Okay, so for those of you who may want to get a copy, please do get in touch with our coordinators. So let's get the ball rolling. So gentamicin is an aminoglycoside. It is a bactericidal. It's usually given patients with uh, pseudomonas infection. So how will we know that it's effective when definitely the infection has been treated? Now, how do we administer it? We need to administer it as prescribed. And 
we have to know that there are two important things that you have to pay particular attention to. One would be the kidney function because it is nephrotoxic. So we need to increase fluid intake to promote excretion of the drug. Second, we need to tell the patient that the medication could cause tinnitus, which is a sign of autotoxicity. Now, it's also important to review the medication history of the patient. Like for example, if the patient's taking um, chemotherapeutic agents like cisplatin or platinol, which may potentially add up to the nephrotoxic effect of the drug. So these are the things that we need to be very, very alert of. And we need to inform the patient about these things. And then keys to giving it safely. So we need to monitor the function of cranial nerve eight. That's the vestibulocochlear nerve, although we said a while back that your gentamicin has greater toxicity in the vestibular system, okay, which may potentially cause permanent okay, um, toxicity in that area. Therefore, it improves on the balance and on the vertigo of the patient. Now, it's also nephrotoxic, so we need to check the BUN, normally is 10 to 20, and the creatinine normally is 0.5 to 1.2. Some literatures would ex extend that up to 1.3 to 1.5. So pay particular attention to the um, discrepancies in normal values. And of course, it, it can be also neurotoxic. So what do we need to um, focus on in terms of providing appropriate nursing care would be to check the peak and through levels of the drug. And so your peak level of the drug, that's the highest level. Now, in order to check on the peak level, it is best to obtain the specimen 15 to 30 minutes after the, the third or the fifth dose of a drug. That is if it is given um, intravenously. If it is given intramuscularly, then it's usually stretched to 30 minutes to one hour. And true level is the lowest level of the drug. The specimen is obtained 15 to 30 minutes before the next dose. Now, these are very significant things that we need to focus on when we're studying gentamicin. Okay, so let's try answering a simple question based on the things that we just learned, okay? So here we go. Gentamicin is given to a patient with Meniere's disease in order to zit one, improve vertigo, two, decrease pain, three, treat the infection in the middle ear, or four, prevent sodium retention. Definitely, um, gentamicin has nothing to do with the sodium balance of the patient. It has also nothing to do with infection in the middle ear because Meniere's disease is not an infection of the middle ear. In fact, Meniere's disease is a disorder of the inner ear, okay, due to an imbalance in the endolympathic fluids. To decrease pain, there's no pain as experienced by the patient with Meniere's disease. So it's not related to the antibiotic function of gentamicin. So therefore, the answer to the question as, I've been, as we've been talking about early on, remember that gentamicin exerts toxicity in the vestibular system, thereby improving the patient's balance. Okay, so therefore it improves vertigo. Okay, so I just hope with that, you learned something today and may I invite you, let's learn together. Send in your request to my email, mentor.raygapos at gmail.com. If you have any questions in mind that you may want to be clarified with, please feel free to send me an email, okay? So once again, this is your mentor, your fact check by the Ray Gapos saying a functional concept a day keeps your NCLEX RN fears away. So if you love this video, please don't forget to subscribe, share, and hit that like and bell notification button so you'll get notified when we upload our videos regularly. And for this week, there's another upload. Wait for it. See you in the next video.